you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to Roads Untraveled. My name is Marcus and today uh, we are just outside of Tokyo, Japan. We're in Yokohama or kind of around Yokohama. Uh, by the mountains, we have found a little bit of a toge road uh, that we're gonna rip up and down, not too quickly, just to kind of get a feel of it. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience driving here in Japan thus far. I've been here uh, for about eight or nine days so far. I've got a few days left, and today we find ourselves in Kino's <sighs> Subaru STI. Uh, it's a blah by STI. Coincidentally, actually my favorite generation STI, uh, and we are going to go for a bit of a drive. It is a show car, the paint is immaculate, so we're gonna take it uh, pretty easy. And yeah, we're just gonna see how it's like in the toge. This is my first time on this trip, kind of going outside of the city and just kind of experiencing the countryside in Tokyo, Japan. It is, it's absolutely surreal. It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> I'm still kind of taking it all in and this car has an insane list of mods. So we're gonna go for a drive. We're gonna talk to Kino. We're gonna get his story behind the build and uh, the inspiration behind the build as well. And uh, yeah, so let's go for a drive. Hey, what's up guys? This is Kino. This is my Subaru WRX STI. I moved to Japan 10 years ago and a month after I moved to Japan, I bought this STI. When I first got it, I went to canyons, I went to toge, I raced at the mountains with a lot of the local guys. The car culture in Japan, uh, there's, like, just like in the States, uh, there's like Spocom, the track scene and like drag race, you know, like there's all kinds of scenes. It goes the same in Japan. Because Japan, uh, all the roads are narrow and you don't really need power. So most people, they just stance it and they just make a street car you know, like street stance styles. That, that's like really common. Um, if you go to Daikoku parking or Tatsumi or any any of the car meet areas, uh, that's what you see most of the times. But um, if you go to Yokosuka, like the base, oh man, um, I just released a vlog about it, but uh, there's like 750 horsepower Supra, 1000 horsepower GTR. So if you want power, there's, there's like, it depends on the area. Like depending on where you go, the scene's different. Super confusing, you guys. Um, what I've learned so far from driving in Japan, obviously I daily drive a right-hand drive vehicle back home and I have for the last five years. So driving on the right side of the car is no issue. That's no issue for me. The issue is being on the left side of the road, <laughs> which I have never experienced in my entire life up until this trip. Uh, so when you're making turns, the, the direction in which you would look to check for oncoming traffic is the opposite. Everything is the opposite. When you're crossing the road as a pedestrian, it's the opposite. You gotta make, yeah, it's, it's very confusing, but I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit here. The roads are extremely narrow, extremely narrow, and a lot of the roads honestly are even too big for like a car like this, which is just a normal STI, <laughs> so. But yeah, uh, as you can see, this this is this has got to be the most visually insane STI or Subaru that we have ever had on the channel. We filmed a number of Subarus in the past, uh, everything from you know Hawkeyes, Blobeyes. I owned a Forester STI for a little bit. It was an automatic, lots of fun. Um, but this thing, it, this thing has left no stone. Kino has left no stone unturned with this build, uh, and that's something I can appreciate. You know that is. That is the Japanese way uh, here in Japan. Uh, first things first, I am looking at uh, a, an insane carbon fiber steering wheel here uh, by DND, one of Kino's sponsors. Uh, it's pretty much the first thing you notice on the interior here, that along with the shifter. It's got a short shifter kit on it as well. As far as the engine setup goes, I'm gonna let Kino kind of go through all the details of the car on uh, the parts, the parts list. Uh, our key parts list will be in the description. Basically, it's still got a factory turbo. Um, Kino has done away with the top mount intercooler, so basically the hood scoop is just sucking in fresh air straight into the engine, and then he's gone with an HKS front mount. This is one of my favorite parts. Um, 
The car has been tuned by HKS. Um, <laughs> Uh, and that's that's the beauty of being here in Japan is all these like we passed Tome on the way here like that is absolutely ridiculous The color of the vehicle I chose the Atlantis blue metallic from BMW They have that out for M3s and M4s um, in the States and Dubai I think but yeah, uh, they don't have it in Japan. And when I first saw the color, I was like, oh shit, you know? It really reminded me of my hometown, Hawaii. And I wanted I wanted the STI to like remind me of my hometown. So I chose the teal. The interior, it's purple, and that's supposed to like show the sunset at the beach in Hawaii. So yeah, uh, that that's why I chose the color. After doing the ECU, I got it white bodied. Right now, it is a lot wider than the stock STI. Okay, so matching the parts, uh, it was not easy because no one had the same kit. So, okay, first of all, um, the front bumper is Voltex. The hood is Varus, same goes for the uh, front fender. And the rear, it's M Sports. But, um, like I said, no one has the same body kit, like the full kit uh, in the same way I installed it. So I didn't know if it was going to match. I didn't know if the line from the bumper to the fender, if it was going to be straight. Um, but I was lucky, I guess. <laughs> okay, so under the hood, obviously, we are in Japan. We're in the motherland. Uh, it has not the 2.5 liter EJ it's got a 2 liter JDM EJ which is pretty much the one you want you know I've driven a few STIs with these motors despite the fact that it is a smaller displacement engine you still get that signature Subaru sound I believe the car's making about 360 horsepower at the wheels uh, and with these 2 liter engines they're a little bit more robust um, and you can still easily do that with stock internals and it's still running a stock factory turbocharger which is awesome super cool so what you get and especially why it's good for the smaller roads here in japan uh is because you get torque um you get torque all over the power band it's it spools up so quickly so incredibly quickly um so what you have is basically the most usable ej you can possibly have but it still has 360 wheels so at the top end it still pulls really good Obviously factory all-wheel drive. Um, I believe the rear differential has been beefed up a little bit, the clutch packs. You've still got your complete, you know, center locking differential all-wheel drive system. Uh, the JDM cars definitely have more power. Oh, here's a tunnel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. shift light there too. So a shift light came on. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> this is ridiculous. There are a lot of very long tunnels in Japan. Um, this is my first time kind of driving outside of the actual city, the downtown core of Tokyo, which itself is like just an expansive metropolis area. I mean, the largest metropolis area on the entire planet. Um, so there, there's a lot of tunnels, a lot of freeways, the Wangan Highway System, you guys know if you're fans of Japanese culture, Japanese driving culture. Uh, we've been driving on that for the past week. All right, so we're following all RWB guys? Yep. Okay, here we fucking go. <laughs> Tokyo, Japan, baby. So are we allowed to like rip it here? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> One cop can't follow all of us, man. Let's get the fuck out of here. There's 
just curves everywhere. I mean, once you're actually off the highway in downtown Tokyo, obviously it's a city, it's a grid, you're going light to light, it's kind of boring. But when you get on the highway system, and if you have the cash to pay the tolls, because there are a lot of tolls going in and outside of Tokyo, um, then you're set and you can basically just rip. The one thing that I found though, uh, and that the locals have warned me about, are the speed cameras. And now that is something that we just don't have back in Vancouver. Um, they've employed a couple of them, but only at certain intersections in the lower mainland Vancouver. Uh, but here it is completely legal and the government has taken advantage of that. Uh, and there are speed cameras everywhere. So uh, the, the speed uh, limits are extremely low when you're around the city. So you really gotta watch. Actually, when I first started um, going to car shows, I didn't really have friends who owned a Subaru. They all owned like a uh, Silvia S15. But um, as I started doing a YouTube channel, a lot of people started like gathering around and I got to know a lot of people. And it's cool, I guess, you know? Mm -hmm. You travel Japan and get to see all these Subarus. Mm -hmm. Not just Subarus, but like any cars. Okay, so, if you go to Daikoku during the weekend, pretty much um, every week you see different cars. But after a while, if you go like maybe for six months, you'll start seeing the same car over and over again and you get to know them more. So like your um, connection with the uh, car people, uh, it, it gets bigger, right? So uh, after, I would say after six months, you'll start seeing a lot more of the same people and you become friends with them and you start hanging out with them more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I got to know a lot of people at Daikoku. You guys, this wide body is nuts. <laughs> the rear fenders, I'm looking at the side view mirror here. It is, yeah, the, the way it's molded as well, it's not a riveted on fender kit, which I really appreciate. I, I really appreciate a kit that has been taken care of and you know, the time has been taken to really mold it into the flowing lines uh, of what traditionally you wouldn't really think of as like a flowing car. An STI is more of a, utilitarian vehicle it's a rally car right it's a it's a a hardcore sedan right so this body kit kind of goes along with that it's still got some sharp edges but at the same time it's got the curves that the blob eye really has uh, I couldn't tell you why it's my favorite generation but uh, it is and that's that so all right you guys JD up tunnel run yeah very smooth power Easy clutch. <laughs> Good blow off sound too. Oh yeah, another really cool thing Kino's done here. So he's got a radar detector and it's actually integrated into the rear view mirror, which is awesome. They've actually got like sensors underneath the road that can detect speed. It's kind of freaky as a car enthusiast. Um, I thought we had a bad in Canada with like, if you go 40K over the speed limit, they'll take your car for a week and it'll cost you a bunch of money. But here it's even worse. Um, but you know, the roads, the roads are so good. I have HKS intake with AVO turbo inlet mm. and I got all the piping done as well. Uh, I got for exhaust manifold, it is Tomei and the front pipe it's HKS <laughs> and the exhaust is a full titanium Grady exhaust. I think with the interior, my favorite part about it is the seats. Um, it's done by, it's made by Subaru. They were designing, uh, when they were when they were designing the GED model, they had it as a concept seat. Um, they never released it, so these are the only pair in the world. With the tail lights, I got the Car Shop Glow custom tail lights. They are LED and it comes with a control unit. So if you want to change the uh, setting of your turn signals, it can be uh, it can be changed to sequential. But yeah, it's really bright during the night, so I try not to step on the brake as often, but yeah, these are really cool. All right, so I have a YouTube channel called Kino STI. Uh, if you guys are interested, go check it out. I travel around Japan. I'm trying to go around all 47 prefectures. Um, 
to show all the car scenes in the local areas. Um, I'm f shooting for cinematics and like I'm doing car meets and I attend to car shows. So far I've been winning the uh, Subaru awards on like multiple shows. But yeah, um, all that kind of stuff. I vlog about it. I make cinematic videos. So if you're, if you're interested, go subscribe. Kino SCI. This is kind of what I would aim for in terms of power and tuning specifically if I was to own an STI. Um, I think the big, you know, I've driven a couple of really big turbo 500 horsepower STIs and they're good but they come with quite a bit more sacrifice. You know, if I was really going big turbo, I think I would prefer maybe a 1J or a 2J. Um, also for the peace of mind, the fact that those engines are so incredibly robust uh, and kind of take more kindly to bigger turbos. Um, that's just me though. I think a smaller turbo, more responsive, you know, you can upgrade the turbo still, but I don't think it needs to be like a 76 millimeter turbo or something, or even a sick, you know, a, a big turbo like that. I don't think it needs to be that, um, especially on these tight B roads here um, around the outskirts of Tokyo. But thank you guys so much for watching this quick episode with Kino's SDI. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, this is, you know, one of the last videos in our series uh, while I'm here in Tokyo, Japan, doing some work uh, with my friend Sid and his koi fish business. Um, and then we're gonna head back to Vancouver and we will be in LA in a couple of months as well. So, uh, thank you Kino so much for putting me behind the wheel uh, of your car. I couldn't, couldn't have asked for more. Uh, you've been showing me around, taking us up into the mountains. It's been a bunch of fun. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys soon.